Hello and welcome to the DSP Project. I'm your host, Rupert Brown. And last week I mentioned that we would have a giveaway. And so this week I'm going to tell you what it is. Um, are you ready for it? It is... The APC20, that's right. The very, very cool people at Akai Professional have agreed to let me give away my test model here. So if you are interested in winning this, head down to the dspproject.com slash win, and I will put all the details there of what you need to do in order to be to enter in the draw. Um, I think we will be, I'll probably draw it about uh, December, like a little, a nice little Christmas end to wrap up the show for the year. We'll give that away. So once again, if you want to win that, the dspproject.com slash win. However, this week's tutorial, I'm going to be starting to talk about effects racks, in particular the chain list. Now the effects rack is quite a powerful tool if you um, realize what it's capable of. So I'm going to go through each of the, the different units uh, in different episodes uh, inside of the effects rack so we can really understand and master it. So here we have a blank set with a just a one loop loaded in and we're talking about the audio effects rack. So first of all to get an audio effect rack into your project there's more than one way to do it. We can drag one in and we've got a, a blank audio effect rack here waiting for an effect to be dropped in. Or if we've already got an effect in our project we can right click on it and select group and when you group one, it, it adds an audio effect rack to the plugin. Or even if we've got uh, multiple plugins, so I'm just drag, grabbing things at random. If I push Command A to select all, and then Command G to group, which does the same thing as right clicking and selecting group, that will put all the uh, effects inside of an effects rack. So um, this video, I'm going to drag a drag a blank one in here. And uh, let's drop in a, uh, I don't know, let's say a vocoder. And uh, I want to talk about the, uh, the, the chain list, which is this little button here pops up this, this little chain list here. So we currently have one chain. Um, and let's drag a, a redux in for a second chain. And I'm going to rename these, Command R. Uh, vocoder and Redux. Okay, so one important concept to understand is that the audio effects rack processes these in um, parallel as opposed to in serial. If they were, if it was to process in serial, the audio would come into our vocoder here, let's say. And then the output from the vocoder would then be fed into the Redux unit. So we would get the Redux effect on top of the, the vocoder effect and then be outputted. But this is not how the effect rack works. It works in parallel. So the audio comes in and then it is split amongst all the chains. So we can have as many, many chains as we want. Let's throw another thing in here. So the audio will come in and then it will be evenly sent to all three of these chains. Um, and then the, the audio is processed in each chain and then the output of the chain is mixed, uh, of each chain is mixed at the very end and that gives us the, the output out of the audio effects rack. Um, so let's talk about what the, the controls we have over each chain. So if I just push play. So first of all, we have a, a meter here which shows us the, uh, the levels going into the effects rack. Um, next we have, this is essentially like a little volume fader. So we can use this to make a mix between each chain. So this is a spectrum, it's not actually creating any effect, it's just a, a visual spectrum. Um, next we have a, a, a pan, so we can pan uh, a chain out one way, so let's say I'll turn these guys right down and we listen to just the vocoder one and we, we can, we've got a pan over that channel and I'll just press delete on my keyboard to bring that back to center. Next we have uh, an activate which works just the same as our activate up here, it's kind of like a, a mute button of sorts. Uh, and then we have a, a solo button next, so if, these, if we turn these guys back up again, we can solo each chain to hear what it sounds like. Um, so we should turn this thing on.
Okay, and finally on the end here we have a hot swap, so we can use that to go through and listen to um, to other other effects chains that we've that we've saved out. Um, so now also on the the organi organizational side of things, we can click and drag these. Now this has no effect over the audio. This is just for for our um, to keep it in order for us. And if we right click, we can also select colors. So we can create colors for chains to make them e easier to recognize. Um, you can also save chains. So let's say you create a, a really sweet uh, I don't know distortion chain. Let's say that you really like. Uh, let's say this Redux, I really like it. Um, I can just grab that Redux and drop it into the audio effects rack and call it Redux Rules. And so now any in any of my projects when I want to add a bit of Redux, I can go to one of my effects racks, drop it in, and uh, we've got the, the color and all my, all my settings are saved. Um, so that is a separate effects rack there, I've dropped it in next door. Or I can actually, I can drop it in here and have it as a another chain or we can actually have um, effects racks inside of effects racks so I can grab my redux and drop it in after my vocoder and, and that will only be pro be processing audio that comes into this chain through my vocoder and then goes through this second rack. We can even have, if we want to go crazy, we can have uh, effects racks inside of effects racks inside of effects racks which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, so I'm just going to delete those back out again now. So as you can see, quite a lot of um, flexibility of how it's all arranged. Um, you can even take a chain, I can, let's say I take this Redux chain, if I click and drag it, rather than just putting it in a, uh, a different place, I, if I click and drag and then hold down over the top of vocoder, it brings up this vocoder chain and I can actually drop it straight in. Um, so I've taken the chain out of there and dropped it into the, the vocoder chain. Uh, I can then take the that audio effects rack and drag it and drop it back out again if I want. Um, so as you can see, it's very flexible. Uh, another thing we can do is we can group uh, effects chain. So let's say we've got um, uh, what's a good example of this? Okay, let's say we've got heaps of uh, we've got a really big bunch of uh, different effects and. Uh, they, let's say these are all I don't know distortion effects or something, and uh, I want to, I want to, I've got the balance right of these, but I just want to balance them against the the Redux. If I, I select this top chain here, holding down Shift, I select the bottom chain, so these are all highlighted. Right click or push Command G to group, and that actually pops them all inside of an audio uh, effects rack inside of this chain. So now I can balance the level of all of these effects just by using this one level meter against the the uh, the Redux level. Okay, so uh, I now want to share with you probably the most my most common use for uh, an audio effects rack, and that is quite simply as uh, a wet dry control. So if we take uh, an effect like the the Redux here, you know you might really like the sound, but there's no wet dry control on this plugin, which means I can't control how much of the original unaffected signal comes through versus the, the process signal. So it's kind of a it's kind of a, an all or nothing an affair. So with this effects rack I've got here, I've got one uh, Redux channel and I've got this channel here which I'm going to rename and I'm going to call it clean. Um, and you can see it's got no effects in it. So what this allows me to do is I can now bring up the volume of an unaltered signal. find a, a mix that I'm happy with. So I still have all the all of the nice sound of the original one with a bit of the bit of the crispy redux sound on it. Um, so the as for the, the auto button and things up here that's that's going into the, the chain selector and I'll get into that in future videos. I think that probably uh, covers enough for, for this week. Just wanted to talk about the, the chain list and how flexible it is. You can route it different ways. You can put uh, effects racks inside of effects racks. Uh, it really is it, even just the uh, this little list. You can you can really do a lot with it. So um, I'll go into more detail later as to uh, all the other things we can do with an audio effects rack. So there you have it. That is the chainless 
purpose of the effects rack. As I said before, I will be going into more detail about the other parts of the effects rack so we can really master it. Um, one last time, if you are interested in winning an APC20, which of course you are, head down to the dspproject.com slash win. If you have any comments or questions about the content of this video, head down to the dspproject.com and leave a message underneath the video. And finally, if you want to get a hold of me direct, you can send a message to inbox at the dspproject.com. That's all we've got time for this week, and I'll see you next week.